Okay, I want to welcome you to our third program this summer. I'm John Waller, the president of the UHS. And we have a great program. And Andrew has been working for literally months, you know, on the research for this thing. I'm sure uh, you'll really enjoy it. And just a couple of things, just to know where the exits are. And uh, so if you can turn off your cell phone, that would be appreciated. about Kwani other than I would drive by. My wife and I grew up in Cranston, Rhode Island, and we would drive by to Westerly, and this was just a road that you'd get to Westerly on. Uh, we owned a house on the Block Island for 20 years, and we would drive by this way because we lived in Connecticut, and it was never a place. Our realtor, Lori Joyel, kept bringing us back when we were selling the Block Island house and said, we should try here. And it took about four years for us to sell the Block Island house. And we finally found the most beautiful house here in Kwani. We love it. And so we've been here now, I think, full time seven years, and we've owned it nine years. So. Every one of you here probably has more history in the Kwani area than I do. But I just love looking at maps. And last year, some of you might have come to the presentation with um, the three homes. We did the Buddington Farm, the Sheffield Farm, and Whistling's Chimneys. I was the one that did the uh, Buddington Farm, and Tracy, is Tracy here tonight? No, maybe she couldn't make it. Um, so I'm going to do a little review of the Buddington Farm, so anybody who is here, and there's some of those names that you'll see, and I used a, a, a couple of resources, and it's funny because over the course of the time that I've been on the Historical Society, for the last um, maybe four years, I think it's been now, maybe three or four years, um, I got this book right here that Ann Doyle, where's Ann? Oh. She's around someplace, she's right back here. And most of you have probably seen this before, but I find it, you know, I just pick it up every now and then, and I say, wow, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. And, and I, put a, I put a sticky beside the paste that says, oh, this is cool, this is cool. And, and literally, this is, this is just what I, and, and I just kind of say, wow, this is cool. So I have stolen some of the material from this book, of which we have some for sale back here, if you don't have one. So, and, and that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 100% of the profits go to the Historical Society. So, yeah. Um, I was fortunate enough to be given a, a, the original unbound version, but this version is actually the one that we're selling, and it has an addendum in it. The unbound one, apparently, I guess they had technical problems with it, and it would fall apart. And this one's in pretty good shape because it was really uh, never used much. But it, uh, anyway, uh, great book. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start my presentation out tonight with a map. Do you see where it is? Yeah? yeah. yeah. Where is it? Post Road. Post Road. What's this right here? Right there. Exactly. Can you see 
that? I'm going to fight for the people. Tonight, and I, I, it may twist your head a little bit, because sometimes you're going to look at the map, but the map is going to be orientated north going this way, instead of right now, north is pretty much straight, straight up. And that's how we normally see things. But sometimes in the maps that I'm going to show you tonight, and some of the maps that we've got around here, the orientation is sideways, so north is this way. So you've got to actually kind of look at it this way, and it will make more sense. So here is Route 1. Route 1. This was taken a couple of years ago. There's Corny Farms. There's the parking lot. There's West Beach Road coming down. Do you see it now? Corny Farms. You go in, you buy some stuff. Okay. Um, Drive up by the Shell Station. There's the Grange. This is where I get my hair cut sometimes, right beside the Shell Station. You come up to East Beach Road, Oxy Road. Okay? Making sense? No. All right. Well, let, let me go to the next slide then, if we can find it. Uh, let's see if this thing. There you go. Whoops. That's it. I didn't mean to do this. Of course, there we go. I'll put this back where it was. Maybe if I hit this thing. There we go. I'm going to drag this back down. This is all live. So you have to bear with me. Okay, so here we are right here. Uh, here we are right here. There's the Grange. There's the fire station. Now let's see if we can see what it looked like a few years ago. Okay, I'm going to drag this across carefully. This is 1939. Watch the Grange. See the Grange? Not much there. All right. East Beach Road, West Beach Road. Wow. Okay, later, at the end of the presentation, I'm going to take you and show you how to do that at home. <laughs> because it's pretty cool. You'll be able to it, you'll be able to increase the size of your home. You'll be able to see your neighborhood. You'll see what it looks like a few years ago. You, you can go back in time. It'll go back to just after the 1938 hurricane. So what they did is, after the 38 hurricane, they um, took aerial photographs of the whole state, and so you can go any place in the state of Rhode Island. So now, if I'm really lucky, I'll be able to do this. I'll be able to pull up my PowerPoint presentation, and I'll go to this thing here. I have to thank my wife because she taught me how to do this. All right. You recognize that? Yes. Okay. We're looking Central Beach, Eastwood. There's the beach right there. There's West Pond. Uh, there's Nidigert Pond. A little higher. See a little bit more of West Beach Road. Remember the nun's cottage? Was that last week or the week or two weeks ago? You see the nun's cottage there? It's right about, let's see if I can get this point. Right about here. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can see uh, the little cottage. Ken, is that somebody that? bringing it into your home? No! <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for Richie's little cottage. There's, it must be right over here. Can you see it, Richie? Yep, you're just about it? on it. Right there, okay. There's your little, we talked about that little cottage. I don't think the other little cottage is in here that we did last, that Leah uh, did last week. No, you're not quite there yet. Okay. <laughs> Reference point on that one? <laughs> okay. East Beach Road is right there. This is the Dingle. Oh, uh, the Bayberry. South Bayberry. There's the Dingle, the little walking path. There's the Dirt Road. My house is, there's my driveway right there. It's a dirt road that goes right there. It looks like I got some furniture or something out in the front yard. My house is just out of this slide here. 
Bob Petrol took this with his, you know, took these first three shots with his, um, with his drone. So that gives you an idea of where we're going tonight. So we got, what we're going to do is the development of the point of road. Sometimes we're going to have to twist the neck this way, sometimes that way. Because uh, the orientation of these maps are, are different. Thank you, the audience. Thank you very much for coming. The resources, the people I actually interviewed, Ann Doyle, Pam Lyons, she's a, is she here tonight? Okay, she is the a historian down at the uh, Charlestown Historical Society. I've only met her once, and I talked to her for an hour and a half, and it's, she's a, uh, a lot of people might know her already. She's just a, a wealth of knowledge. Uh, Art Gantz, uh, Salt Pond Coalition, Leo Manelli, past president of Cuba, and also he was the treasurer of the Cuba, the East Beach Water Association. Uh, I'm on the Water Association myself. Uh, Ernie Borner, is Ernie here tonight? No, uh, Ernie is in Osaka on Hoxie Ave. Joanne Nyland, I saw her, she's the vice president. And the thing I remember about her, she gave me a box of old documents and she said, just be careful of the things, because I'm told there's bugs in these things. <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta tell you, Joanne, the funny thing is, uh, tonight I, I had some of those documents out on the table and I saw an ant walking on it, but it wasn't from the box, it was from our countertop. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, if you haven't had a chance to get up to the town hall, Steve McCandless, he's the GIS coordinator up there. He's unbelievable. I think he's, I forgot how many years he told me that he, uh, he helped me do that, that little demonstration I just gave earlier. And, and at the end of the presentation, there'll be more. Tracy Marion, and she's, Marin, she's the owner of the Bunnyfield Farmhouse. And Bob Patron, who couldn't make it, um, he uh, is, a, I didn't show you his house as we uh, looked at it, but that's okay. The Historical Society, I think, and I thank my wife and family. Tonight's presentation, we're going to take a short walk back in time first. Then we're going to look at the development of the roads in the maps. We'll talk about some of these communities, uh, West Beach, East Beach, Central Beach, Sunrise, and a little bit of Shady Harbor. Anybody from Shady Harbor here tonight? Oh, I was hoping that somebody would come. Okay, and then we'll look at a quick look at some of the associations and a GAS demonstration. Questions and answers. But before I talk about that, we've got to go back in time a little bit. All right, look at this. I just love this guy. Uh, he's actually he, he's actually got uh, you know two guys. This is how people travel back in the day, and they've got their food source hanging right there. So, corduroy roads, log roads like uh, over paths and things, over uh, low spots and swampy areas. They just put logs across the roads. Uh, in the 1700s. From New York to Boston took six 18-hour days, okay? And passengers had to rise, I'm reading this, at 2 or 3 in the morning each day for six days to get from New York to Boston. This is a close-up of an express rider. Traveled by uh, express rider from New York to Boston between one and four days, depending on conditions. New York to um, uh, Baltimore, same thing. And that's an express rider on the roads. So, Ann Doyle, thank you for that photograph. That's right here in Kwame. This is the type of transportation back in the, you know, the early 1900s. Yeah, 1908. You might say, what the heck does he have a, a PowerPoint uh, a presentation, uh, the invention of a pot belly stove? Anybody got any ideas? Why is that in this presentation, do you think, of especially the Kwani area? 
Winter. Evening? Oh yeah, for winter. Yeah, you definitely need to, if you're going to be around. Control the fires and stop houses from burning down. Hey Leo, how you doing? <laughs> Control the fires, stop burning down. Was it iron ore or an ore? Uh, they were made out of cast iron, typically. Oh, oh, oh what did I do? Uh, okay, let me go back. Oh, I see. Do you see what it did? It reduced. When you had an open fireplace, you had most of the heat going straight up the chimney. The invention of that thing right there created more leisure time. If people weren't having to work as hard. People weren't having to spend all summer chopping wood to get ready for the winter. You went from about 11 cords of wood to heat a normal home to anywhere between four or five cords of wood. And so that was one of the things that helped create a little bit of leisure time. <laughs> That's on West Beach. It's a porch. What's a porch have to do with it? A porch, back in the early days when the factories were all around, the factory was a here, and the factory homes would be around the factory, and people would go and sit on the porch, because they didn't have the air conditioning. They'd sit out on the porch, and as the factory walk, workers walked by, they'd exchange information to each other. They'd say, hey, Joe, I heard your wife had a baby. Yeah, oh, isn't that nice? Uh, hey, Mary, I heard, you know, that it was a, a form of communications. So those porches were built so that you could get out of the hot house, but a source of just hanging around. And I'm guessing that, you know, this is just my imagination, and I'll show you this later on when we get down to West Beach. There was a boardwalk, and along the boardwalk, many of those little cottages and homes had porches. So the analogy of today's porch is kind of like your Facebook. People share information on Facebook. Oh, I heard your wife had a baby. You know, like, so the porch was a means of communication. So those port houses that had porches, that type of uh, information. So keep going, Ken. <laughs> There's three different communities with people kind of hanging out, <coughs> leisure time. And so the three communities were East Beach, the Heights on this map, and West Beach. So what you've got is you've got East Beach Road coming down, and if you notice, there's no connecting roads on this map between East Beach Road and West Beach Road. That's West Beach Road coming down. You had a community here called East Beach, and the access to that, and you'll see my maps later, the access came this way. There was no access coming across to what is now Central Beach, and then you had maybe the Ashaway cottages were in this area, and this is the famous West Beach that had the big boardwalk that started right around here. The old breachway that came in this way and curved that way rather than going across where it does today. All right. Last. Last, uh, last summer, about this time, we talked about the uh, Buddington Farm, the Sheffield Farm, and Whistling Chimneys. And a little history, we've got Benjamin Babcock sells to Billings Macomer 137 acres, $4,500 back in 1868. It's basically farmland at that point. It's, you know, relatively valuable to farmers, but not, the communities aren't building into it yet. Billings Macomber sells to John Buddington. John Buddington sells everything 
he owns, except for the two lots that his home is on and the lot across the street, which was a farm, uh, garden, a garden area, and I'll show you those later. But remember this name, because I'm going to talk about this guy right here quite a bit tonight. Samuel H. Davis. So he buys everything from John Buddington. John Buddington sells some of those cottages on the beach. He also, because he's got a well, he sells well, he does it, with the property on the beach, he sells the rights to be able to come up and get some water, drinking water. And in Anne's book, she's actually got a picture of the well, she's got people collecting some water. It, it, it's just a wonderful read. Um, Howard Thorpe buys the Sheffield property, and this, most of, if you know how, if you're from Central Beach, you've heard that name before. He's the one who established Central Beach, and we've done a lot of, uh, over the years, we've done a lot of presentations about how it thought. But Samuel Davis buys most of the land in 1923. How it thought comes in a year later and buys Central Beach land. And then I couldn't find an exact date. Eventually, I guess, this is my theory, my theory, and, and maybe somebody here who would know the real history, Samuel Davis eventually sells his land off to Howard Thorpe um, that he doesn't sell lots to. There's John Buddington and his two daughters. This is one of the deeds, this is the actual deed that Billings McCombert sells to John Buddington and you can see his name signed at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Billings McComber is the a purchaser, but look who Billings McComber attorney is. <laughs> and you see John Buddington, attorney, Billings McComber. So they were buddies, you know. So uh, he sells his land to Buddington and probably at a discount, I don't, I don't know, but uh, he ends up, John Buddington starts to sell off some lots down on the beach. And here's where it kind of gets, I think it gets interesting at this point. In, in my record of, now remember, I'm not a historian, I'm a shop teacher. I, I kind of just like to look at these maps. And I'll show you some pictures of, up at the town hall. They have uh, maps galore up there. But John Buddington sells to Samuel Davis. And here's what he sells. He sells, if you notice, the houses that are on the beach at the time are these, these houses here, and they're in these nice colors. John Buddington sells to Samuel Davis this piece of property around these houses because these lots were sold individually. So he sells all of this land, lot C, lot B, which goes this way. Oh, oh do you see where we are? I'm sorry. Sometimes I just assume. This is East Beach Road. This is Blue Shutters. Okay, East Beach Road, I'm sorry, East Beach Road comes down. Blue, started, blue shutters today is about here, okay? Right here would be Highland Road. Bob, your house would be right about up here someplace. All right, there's no Highland Road on this map, but there's a path that goes up to the Buddington house because all these homes here can get their drinking water. They walk up in the morning, they send somebody up, get a bucket of drinking water from the well. But there's all the lots, all right? Notice this one right here. I'm gonna talk about that one right there for just a second, all right? And the way to get into this community, East Beach, is this way. You didn't come in, there was no, there was no road here at this time. Everybody with me so far? What road is that? Right. What road is that now? Okay, this would, right, this would be Highland Road coming here, and uh, Kwani, uh, Fresh Rock would be right about here. 
Okay, that's West Pond. That's Garden Pond. This pond is actually attached. It's no, it's no longer attached today. Uh, the hurric 38 hurricane changed that. But uh, East Pond is still a little pond over here, half that size. And Garden Pond is still there. My home is right behind Garden Pond. The highway. Yeah, that's what we're talking oh, about. the it's highway the is it's the beach. It's, it's the beach. The parking lot, you would come, the East Beach parking lot, you'd come down uh, Highland Road, and that would probably be about where the parking lot is. Or maybe the parking lot is back here, a little bit behind. Okay, and you'll see it in, in a little bit later. But there, um, they refer to highways like we refer to as roads. So it's not a highway as we think about highway. It, they just use that terminology in maps. All right, you see that house right there? You see what it says, Lily and Jewett? There it is, on the beach. All right, they decided, I think it was about 1932, because they had some hurricanes, smaller hurricanes, they didn't have the 38, they had other hurricanes before this, so some people were getting a little nervous on the beach. So they started, a few people started moving the house back. There it is today. All right. That's still there. That's Scott's house, Scott and Helen's house right now. And that's Highland Road that I'm standing taking the picture from. I don't think they could make it tonight, but that's the house. And I'll show you where we're at here now again. Uh, Samuel Davis, East Beach Road, the community that comes in, Samuel Davis says, hey man, I, if, I, if I break this into some lots and I can sell this, maybe I can make some money. Right? Why not? Uh, leisure time, people have more leisure time. Um, so, if we look at, if I can get this, East Beach Road, Highland Road, that says Ocean View. What's wrong with that? Sea breeze. Sea breeze, yeah. So on some of these maps, the names have changed. What is this right here? Charlestown Pond. Nidigert Pond. Okay, so the name sometimes, and actually there's another name for Nidigert. Pole, it begins with a P. Poetic. Po okay, thank you. Yeah. So, so that I've seen in three names on uh, Nidigert Pond, but Charlestown Pond is in this era of time. Uh, but then it becomes Nidigert Pond. So we've got East Beach Road, Blue Shutters would be over here someplace. There's nothing over here. There's land that's owned by other people here. But Samuel Davis says, okay, I'm gonna take my lots and I'm gonna to start to put in some, some development here. Take a look at that, everybody. I'll show you this a little bit later. My feel, my uh, my theory is that's the, the the ice house, the missing ice house that that doesn't show up. There's the ice house. My home is right here. Upper Highland comes down from Overlook, but does not connect like that. But Mr. Davis says, "Look, I can build lots." right up to the pond. I can sell these lots. I can sell these lots. So there are, that's Tracy's house right there, the Buddington Farm. That's another uh, structure. This lot eventually gets, um, the, those two lots get connected. I think that lot's there and this gets cut in half. Or maybe, no, that's about what it is now. That's about what it is today. Uh, different maps show that particular lot right there different. This right here, this lot and this lot, uh, John Buddington kept those two lots for himself, and so he had farmland over there, and actually, Bob Pompey, that's where your house sits, right there. And that's Sea Breeze. This is all part of his. This isn't part of, um, this isn't part of uh, Howard Thorpe's land yet. Howard Thorpe eventually buys this piece of land right there, and that there is Central Beach. Okay, so he buys the Sheffield Farm property, and keep moving, Ken. All right, so that's just a little close-up of the same thing. 
And right now on that particular map, it says the heirs of Aaron Lucas. That's who, um, that's who um, Howard Thorpe purchased it from one year from this map. Ken, can I ask you a yes. question? Yes. In 1923, when Davis did that, were there any town regulations regarding lot size? <laughs> no, no, no. No, you, do uh, you, no, you pretty much did what you uh, wanted. Not only that, Leo, is that wait until you see some of these other maps I'll show you. I'm going to keep going, but I'll come back to that, okay? That's the extension. There's uh, just basically the same thing, but a little blue shutters would sit here. Okay. Samuel Davis's land, just like I showed you in that other map. Samuel Davis, Samuel Davis. So he bought, this was, I think, was this lots B, C, and A. And so he, that was all part of the Buddington farm. Samuel Davis is not the only one who's thinking about, oh man, people got leisure time. People are getting extra money. People are buying land down on the, uh, down on the pond. This is Charlestown Pond, and this is James Burdick in 1923, and he's developing. If you go to the right a little bit, we've got Benjamin Moulton, <coughs> and he's dividing land. And this was actually a revised from 1925 to 1930. I'm guessing that he decided he's going to put in these lots over here, too, in addition. <laughs> So these are called uh, uh, beach house, bath house lots. So you put a bath house on them. But look at the development. I mean, this is crazy what things could be here. All right? Think what could be here. All right? There we go. We're going to keep going. This is what I call his, his master plan. Uh, Samuel Davis's. I'm just making these terms up. I'm not a historian. I just look at these maps and I'm saying, wow, this is crazy. Uh, so I kind of turned that. This is his master plan and Samuel Davis, 1926. So this is three years after he purchases it, he comes up with this. All of this stuff can be found up at the town hall. This is just at a Charlestown town hall. You walk into the vault. Okay. Now you have to find, kind of look, know what you're going to be looking for. <laughs> Yours truly. And if you look at this rack here, uh, these are sleeves, and there's, there might be ten different maps inside this sleeve. And so you look on the computer. That you can do it online, but the line that if you go up and use their computers, it's much much faster. You can do it. It's it's <laughs> archaic to use the online version of this. And so all of the documents, all of the historical documents that I use are in that room. And so going back to his master plan, East Beach Road, there's the dingle, all right? There, and look how it curves in. I'll show you that later. All right, it curves this way. So the dingle curves that way. But look at the development over here. So blue shutters is right about here. Wow. All right, blue shutters, you see East Beach Road coming down. All right, look at this development. Two roads going this way. But, you know, we're thinking too, it's 1926. All right, we, got, we have the benefit of knowing what's going to happen in a few years. All right, can you see what that is? Island Road. So, the community is still there. We've got another road coming in here. So, he can't move these houses. He can build around them. But, look at this. All along this side of the pond. Okay, look at this. This is what I was going to refer to, Leo. You said, was there any zoning back then? <laughs> Look at that lot right there. Look at these lots here. Is it wet? Oh, we got to do it. We're just going to fill it in, get the moldos and we'll just fill in the pond. Right? That's what his plan was. That's right in the pond. I mean, and this pond is, you know, and they're selling the land back into the water. Did they actually build on it? 
No, this is where the, all of the parking lot now is. The, the East Beach parking lot, you come down Sea Breeze, you go down Highland Road, and down here they have a little, uh, if you're not familiar with it, there's a little a shack there that uh, we have a, a check-in shack. And then um, you turn to the left and you go into the parking lot. So this is all parking lot here. But I will, I'll give you a little preview of what I'm going to say in a minute. Howard Thorpe eventually buys this land. He has a brilliant idea. Okay, so keep that in your, in your thought. Are you with me so far? Yeah. Am I doing all right? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody falling asleep yet? No. 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 Okay, keep going. Now we're going kind of a little north. Okay, so here's Overlook. Overlook. There's Upland, North Road is there, but there's nothing here. All of these lots, again, right into the swamp, all right? This road is not there, this road is not there. Uh, you know, there's many of this, you know, none of this is there. Uh, no, 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 overlook. Yeah, this might actually be there. So it doesn't go, yeah, Buddington would be right here, but then it turns the corner and goes this way. So you've got lots here, and you probably don't have those lots, but that's right in the swamp area, or in the, in the wetlands area, I should say. This road's not there. So in the west half, it's did the surveyor go out and look at this property? <laughs> uh, 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 did the, the question is, did the surveyor go out and look at the property? <laughs> it looks like it had been surveyed because it, it does says, show where the wetlands are and whatnot. It All says, right. It says it's surveyed at the top. Yeah, I would think it is. Uh, the waterfront. At this point, <laughs> at this point, it does say how it thought here, but notice it's 1926. How it thought buys in 1920. What did I say? 1924. Okay. Samuel Davis bought in 23. How it thought buys this property in 24. And so now on this master plan, I call it, how it thought is recognized as owning that land. Alright, so there's a Back a little bit further, the Jewett House, which is, which we just, I showed you the real, that's right about over here someplace, it's, it's still, there it is, right there, all right, it's still there, hasn't been moved back because it's 1926, it gets moved back in 1923, thank you. Kevin Bisbee, anybody know him? Uh, Shirley uh, Valentine, um, she's right on, she is my, this is Highland Road, uh, Upper Highland, I should say, that's Upper Highland, it does not come through, it stops maybe about here, my property is right in this area, there's the ice house, there's the Buddington Farm. There's the lot across the street from the Buddington Farm. This house, I'm sorry, uh, Kevin Bisbee's house is down here someplace. The 38 hurricane washed it across this pond, and so I've got photographs of when it landed right about there. And uh, then they kind of jacked it up. But as you as you know, many a lot of houses got you know swished across the pond. Uh, but this was kind of interesting because you can actually see those before pictures. Uh, the ice house I just pointed it out. That's my that's my thought. Where's the end? I think that I think that's the ice house right there because it's right on the pond. And it's not Kevin Bisbee's because it's too early. 1938 hasn't arrived yet. So just another map of it. And there it is. Okay, there's the big picture. Um, I had to actually, when I took those pictures, um, that big map is folded up inside one of those sleeves. 
And so I would, had to take the sleeve apart with a screwdriver and lay it out on the floor. And that's about as high as I could get with my camera to take those pictures that you just saw. Uh, but you can get this right on, uh, right on the website. But that's everything put together. Each one of these, uh, each one of these frames was like one picture. So then I could take a little bit of it. But look at the development in that. So Samuel Davis. 1926. Are we to assume that all those lots had houses on them? No, no, no. He, he wanted to sell those lots. He, so the, the, many of the, you know, he's, he's in the real estate market and he wants to sell the lots. And if he can cut up the land into smaller pieces of land, then we can sell those lots. Uh, 50 foot by 100, you know, so uh, 50 by 100. All right, um, Samuel Davis, 1931, East Beach Road, blue shutters. He changes it around some of them. Maybe he's saying, yeah, maybe they're not selling as much, but he actually makes them a little bit longer, a little bit less ambitious. I just, uh, just thought I'd show you, there's his signature, you know, and his wife's signature. So it's kind of neat to see, you know, when you're going through these records, you see these little tidbits of information and say, oh, wow, that's cool, that's his signature. Uh, there's many documents that you find up there, uh, deeds, um, and again, I don't do this as a living, so it was kind of fun for me. Uh, people that do it for a, di a living may uh, find it difficult. Uh, looks like Mary's name was forged by her husband. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, look at the D of the Davis. Yeah. 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 Good point. Okay. Our buddy Sam, he's decided that he's going to. Uh, because this is a formal road here, he's going to go to the town council and he's going to say, road to be abandoned by the town council. This road right in here is going to be abandoned because he's, this is the actual document. It's up at the town hall that you can actually go up and touch and read. Uh, so he wants to put it, you know, so he has to apply to the town and get some permission to do this. And, and the way that he does it, he highlights this area and saying that's what we like to abandon and this is what we like to build. That's an actual document right there. Who owned that? Who owned yeah, that? Yes. Uh, who would own the actual who, road? Who actually owns the road? Uh, that's a good question. I can't answer that with authority of, of, of actual knowledge. But the question is, who actually owned that? Maybe the town? Because as you can see, the lots were on either side. But the lots, uh, many of them, not on this, so there, there's two different names on these lots. Sometimes there's the same name on both sides. Okay, and there's another uh, actual drawing of that intersection. Um, here we go, 1931. Okay, very similar to what we've seen, but uh, that's just a black and white. And that I actually had to uh, tape it and <laughs> because it didn't come in one piece, and so I actually take that. But you can actually make, you go up to the town council, I mean, the town hall, and you can print some of it out, but sometimes on their records, it's it's in two places, so you physically have to cut and paste it. All right, All right. East Beach. That's what, the, that's what the beach is. They're sitting on the beach. This is... Family and uh, friends of in uh, this is a photograph that Ann Doyle has, and she let me share this with it. And uh, some just you know out there having fun on the beach. They got a photograph out there. That must have been pretty cool technology. You know, that day to have the photograph out on the beach, you get your picture taken with it. Um, Cleveland. Like? I wondered, and this is what I kind of, uh, uh, why I kind of wondered myself. I was like, well, why did they start to form these associations? I mean, what was the, what was the reason why an association even got formed in the beginning? Why not just have a piece of property? 
Um, the residence originally it was called the Quantitog East Beach Civic Improvement Association. Howard Thorpe offered to sell some of those beachfront lot, uh, lots as a parking lot. All right? Think of it as a, 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 an ingenious idea of a realtor to make the lots in the back more attractive. Hey, how about if I sell you some lots up on the beach so that the people who are back there can be able to drive to the beach and rather than having to walk all of that distance. That makes it more attractive. It also makes that real estate in the back more appealing to sell. And everything I've read and all of the oral histories that are right here in, um, in, in, in our archives that everybody has access to, and I, I actually just print them out, and I just love reading some of these old um, documents that people who are, some have passed on, um, but we have oral histories here that people have interviewed these folks, and everybody that I've read seems to like Howard Thorpe. He's got a nice personality, and so he buys from Samuel Davis Everything that Samuel Davis doesn't buy, uh, doesn't sell, and my guess is maybe Samuel Davis had a little, and I don't know this, I'm just guessing, Samuel Davis has a little bit of overthought and 38 hurricane hits, and maybe he gets wiped out financially. So shortly after that, that Howard Thorpe then comes into the picture of selling East Beach land, uh, you know, acquiring more land to sell. Howard Thorpe says, hey, those lots are more attractive if I've got a beachfront that I can have people park. And that happens over in Saka also. So it's not, East Beach isn't the only place. So he offers to sell um, the land, but to be able to sell land, and Leo actually explained this to me, to be able to sell land, you can't sell something to like a homeowners association because it's not a legal entity. So he gets uh, Kweber, Howard Thorpe gets Kweber to incorporate. And what that means is that now you can officially or you can legally sell property to an incorporated body. You can't sell, I guess, uh, homeowners association can't own property. I'm not a lawyer, I don't know, but that's the way, it makes sense to me. He incorporates it, then he sells that land, uh, he sells that land as parking lot to the association, but the association that's formed has to raise some money to be able to pay how it up, and they they have and I got a stack of these old uh, 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 bonds, and they're the original bonds that in the top one is Jan Back, and some of you probably know the family, and she's on East Beach now. And this document here is that everybody paid $25 for the bond, so they were able to accumulate a bunch of money. And then every year, they would, they would give the money back to the people who had uh, offered to buy the bond. So they got that $25 back. And back then, in 1958, um, this was the way to raise some money. Do I have that kind of right, Leo? Well, just to add yeah. briefly to it, yeah. the, the bonds were $25 each, and many people bought more than one bond. You could oh, okay. sell one bond and raise the money adequately. And what happened afterwards was each bond was numbered, and at each annual meeting, they would draw numbers out of the hat. Mm -hmm. A few numbers, depending on how much money they had in the treasury, and those were the bonds that got paid off. And yeah. eventually, they all got paid and off. And eventually, everybody got their money back. And so it's a pretty neat way to do it. But this is, uh, you know, I've got a stack of these uh, uh, sitting on, uh, at home right now that I will return to Joanne. Uh, but it's just kind of neat to actually touch these things and say, okay, you better raise money somehow. SACA. All right, Sunrise uh, Civic Association. Uh, Bill Penhollow was the first president. I interviewed uh, Ernie Borner 
He's a long-time resident, and later tonight I'm going to show you what it looked like back then. Um, this is the map that you're going to have to twist your head. This is the map. This is Post Road, or Route 1. So kind of tip your head this way and look at it this way. So Route 1 is this way. This is Hoxie Avenue. This is East Beach Road. The church would be right about here. The apartments are right about here. Okay, so Hoxie Avenue comes down this way. And these are all the lots that um, Howard Thorpe has purchased. Uh, yes, Charlestown Estates is Howard Thorpe. So he's selling these lots. That's the, that's the southern section. So here we've got Hoxie Avenue going to Moulton. And over here would be Paradise, East Beach Road. So these lots here. Ernie tells me, Ernie is about right here, right? No, this might, he might be two lots right here. He might be right here. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of look at it a little bit later. But he told me that one of the things that Howard thought, thought of at the time, and this became a big controversy, they said, um, look, if you buy in soccer area, you got access to a lagoon. You can park your canoes and, uh, and you can park your boats right here and you have access to get out to Nibigert Pond. Remember, we're looking at it like this. But that lagoon shows up in here. And as time goes on, Ernie's telling me that the wind direction is predominantly um, eastward, so the lagoon gets filled up with mud. So it, it, it's hard to keep that lagoon, you know, somebody's got to pay to get it dug out. But he said at the time when he bought his, I remember in the mid-50s, right here, he bought, he bought one lot for $1,000. Across the street, if he wanted that lot, that would be $50. But he said when he bought his lot in the, mm, I want to say, uh, 53, 54, 55, I just don't recall, he said, I could have bought all the way up to Route 1. There was nobody, that, nobody there. But he wanted to be on the pond, and he said there was no other development all the way up to Route 1. He could have bought it all. But, um, you know, back then, $1,000 is $1,000. That's a lot of money. And so he ended up buying, I think he's got actually a double lot. And I think the story is, is that somebody was thinking about buying it, and how it thought goes to Ernie and say, uh, says, hey, uh, I got somebody who might want to buy it. Are you sure you don't want to take it? And he says, yeah, I'll take it. Uh, okay, just give me $100 now and just pay me off. And apparently, I've heard that story many, many times. How it thought just said, yeah, just give me 100 bucks now and pay me $100 and, uh, you know, over time, uh, a month, and, and then it's going to be yours. Okay. Does that sound familiar? Okay. West Beach area, developed in the 1800s. There's three associations. One at Beach. There's about, there's, and, and uh, Donna, you may have to help me on this. We've got 30, or Steve, you may have to help me on this. You've got 30 regular members in the Quantucatog East Beach, uh, uh, Quantucatog Beach Association, and that started in around uh, 1980. They also have a tennis association with 16 members, and they also have a small water company that are attached to 14 houses attached to that. Straight out of Dan's book. If you don't have it, you should reread it. If you have it, reread it. If you don't, you should just get a copy. There's the boardwalk. You're looking from the breachway, the old breachway, out into the Atlantic Ocean. So you're on the breachway side looking out. Now this is the beach side, the east side of that same boardwalk, looking at some of the development. And there's the original plan. And if you have a chance, it's displayed in that corner right there, the real copy. That's the best picture I could get of it because I was shooting for the glass. But that's the plan back in 1887 of the West Beach. Um, so, again, uh, 
uh, kind of turn it this way. The Atlantic Ocean is um, over here, okay, and this would be the breachway coming in. So you kind of had to turn it like that in your head if you're thinking no. So a little close up. Similar, 1912. Yeah. yeah. Over here. I'm sorry, yeah. Go ahead, Leo. Oh, did Howard Thorpe do on that? No. On that. Who? Um, was that one person? Isaac Briggs. Oh. And this, you know, at that time, in 1912. And this was the Babcocks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that would be the Babcocks. Their names are right there on that plan. So in 1887, the Babcocks owned the West Beach area. And then this is still the West Beach now. And now Isaac Briggs. Same thing, but just that's the computer screen of it. And yeah. the Babcocks. Yeah. actually had a farm and they owned Whistling Chimneys and all that land. Okay, so here we go. Here's Whistling Chimneys right about here. So they would have owned all of this and there it is, Babcock, right here on this map. Thank you, Ann. Mm -hmm. All right, and so they would have owned the, Bab the Babcock farm. Farmland, with, I kind of was, in, in looking at these maps, I was kind of enthralled at kind of looking. We're almost to the end of where I have a big treat to show you, all right? <laughs> How am I doing? I, I'm, I, I'm going to keep moving. Whistling chimneys. We've got this funny corner. We've got uh, Sheffield Farm sitting right there. Farmland, very valuable. So that's why if you go down West Beach Road, then you go to Old West Beach Road, and it makes that funny little corner. But nowadays, we have the main road that goes this way. And that, there's the Sheffield Farm. Here's the Sheffield Farm here. West Beach Road coming down. Howard Cook puts it, wants to put in this road. Central coming in this way. Look over here, two wells and a pump house. That's about where the, uh, where the ball field is, okay? So the original wells, were over here. They're not back behind sea breeze. The original wells and pump house were right here on this map. But this corner here, if right now you come down to Sheffield Farm and you go that way. So on this map in 1925, after Thorpe has purchased it, he's putting in all of this subdivisions here. But there's the Sheffield Farm and another uh, small structure out back. But the road hasn't been changed. West Beach Road comes down and makes that little corner. Unfortunately, I didn't get a very good shot of that. But here's a close-up of the same thing. Another close-up. 1930, he says, you know what? Now you've got to twist your head a little bit. Here's West Beach Road coming down from the north. There's the old West, it says old highway, but he's proposing to put in, cut this up, so the Sheffield Farm sits right about here. All right, but that's one of the original drawings showing how that road changed. Central Beach Fire District, we've talked a lot about that. I think you know a lot about this. Most of the people from Central Beach, uh, <laughs> They incorporated it much earlier because Howard Thorpe purchased the land and he didn't have to kind of convince anybody to incorporate that land. He, he basically made it into a fire district which then had the ability to be able to uh, purchase, uh, purchase apparatus for fire protection, supplying water, maintenance and repro uh, re improving roads, and collecting garbage. There it is today. So, if you come down West Beach Road, there's old West Beach Road. Here's the Sheffield Farm, right about, right in this area here. Is it here? Yeah, yeah, there it is. So, if you think there's the central location, central uh, of Sheffield Farm, this was all farmland surrounded by the farm. You come down to the farm. 
Shady Harbor. Some people don't think Shady Harbor is part of the peninsula. I wanted to just kind of just throw a few slides up here of the development of Shady Harbor. There it was in 1939, and here it is today. And what I'd like to show you is this photograph, and we have that. Uh, and actually, we're, we're in the process of trying to get it digitized, Shady Harbor. There's some farm, a farm here, a farm here, a few houses, and that's it. That was, we're kind of guessing that's in the mid-50s, early 50s. And what I'd like to do now is I'd like to go back to this, and I, well, hopefully we won't take too much time, but I don't see too many people leaving. I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to do this fast, and I'm going to walk you through it fast. And this is going to be dangerous for me because remember I showed you this? And I did this? Yeah. I'm going to show you how to do that at home. Because the neatest thing about this is you can let it regenerate. It sometimes takes a little time to regenerate. You can go any place in Rhode Island. Okay, so it's going to take a few minutes to regenerate. I'll take you first down to the breachway. Let's get this out of the way. Present breachway. The water comes in here, goes here. Is this cool or what? Here's the old breachway. Right here. So the old breachway came in and probably came in and it kind of, you know, curled maybe in this area and then it did come out generally in the right same place, but it twisted quite a bit. Okay? Let's take a peek. I don't I don't have to imagine what it did look like. There's the old breachway. Okay, so the old breachway. Alright, and it turns this way. Can you see my little arrow on the screen? Okay. Now let me just bring it back again. Because it, it's this is after the 38 hurricane. So when you start to enlarge this thing, let me bring it up a little closer. Okay, so there's the reach way. Donna and Steve, do you see your home there? Kind of. <laughs> Take a look at all that washed out area. Okay, all of this is all washed out. It's, it's, it's all sand that was brought in. There's a few homes here. Um, I'll bring you down Central Beach. And at first, let's, it's easy to see what it looks like now. Here's Central Beach, right? Um, Central Beach. So you can see the houses. Richie, your house is, you know, the, the little house is right over here. Some, oh, there it is right there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got uh, Steve Young's home right about here. You know, this, you've got, what do they call this baby beach? Uh, right in the front, there's no homes here. There's a group of homes on this side. There's a group of homes. A oh, little beach. Okay, let's take a look to see what it looked like right after the 38 hurricane. All right? Look at that. Can you see? You can see the lots. There were, you can see the actual lots. There's a couple of houses that made it through the 38. All right? Take a look at all this land back here. Here's the corner. All right, here's the corner right there. The corner is, uh, looks like it was a major road better than this corner, but this is there because this is this is now 1939. All right, so this corner has been put in. There's the Sheffield Farm right there. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna take I'm gonna do something crazy here. All right, I'm gonna walk you through this so you can do this at home. You see this right here? I'm going to turn this thing off. I'm also going to turn that off. And then I'm going to go, it seems uh, to work better on Firefox. So what you're going to do when you get home, you're going to put in 
Rhode Island, DEM, Environmental Resource Map. Okay, the Department of Envir uh, I mean the uh, Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management. You're going to click on this one, and then you're going to go to this maps right here, maps and data, Rhode Island Department of Environment. This screen will come up, and what you want to do is go down, and you, you, it, it gives you a number of different maps you can choose from. And if I can click on this just to bring it down a little bit. This is the one you want to click on. Oh, right there. Uh, right above my arrow. Uh, right above this. So when I go over here, it's going to say View App. I'm going to press that. And you see how it does this little funny thing? First, the state of Rhode Island comes up. And I'm going to get rid of this. It says click to restore the map that you were just on. I'm going to get rid of that because I want to just walk you through this. I'm going to enlarge it by using the little roller on my mouse, and then I'm going to drag it. And sometimes it's easier to see the real view of it. Now I'm going to start to enlarge it, and I can do it better if I'm staring at it. Here's the airstrip right here. Okay, here's the grip. Here's Quantic Guitar. Now you have to let it refresh. There's route one up here. It's refreshing. Here's where we're sitting right now. Alright? I'm just trying to do it slow so it slowly it, it'll come in focus. The better internet that you have, the more it'll come in focus. Now if you wanted to just look at it. Well, what's that look like in 1988? You come over here to this right-hand side of the screen. All right? Now, remember, here's a little bit of a problem. Back in 88, they actually just took photographs, and then they pasted the photographs together. The earlier ones, you see, so these are just photographs that they, somebody actually cut and paste. So sometimes you end up with lines that are not a road, like this line right here is not a road, but I can zoom in on that, and I can drag it over, and I can kind of look for the Grange. Unfortunately, this isn't, isn't a little good one. I'm going to change this to 1981, so I'm going to go to 81. And sometimes you have to unflip. So there's 1981. So you can do this. You, you following me so far? All right, so now I'm going to do this. I'm going to go down. I still have an aerial photo clicked open right here of 2022-2023. So now I'm going to go back up, and I'm going to unclick this one, and I'm going to go to 1939, that's the oldest, and then I'm going to go up to the upper right-hand corner. You see this, that, that thing right there? That's the swiping bar. So what you're going to do is hit that little thing, and now all I need to do is drag it back and forth. Is that cool? Yeah. I'm going to drag this over here so we can look at Quanty Farm. Uh, Ann Lyons told me a really interesting story, and it disproves it right here. Um, Dick Hutchins, 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 thank you, Hutchins. He was a, a big member here at the Historical Society. When he was a boy, he lived in the house here at this farm. But when they put in the highway, the farm had to be moved, so did his house. So let me go this way first. There's the house right now across the street from Quanty Farms. There's Quanty Farms, the little house right there. So there's his farm house. And so Pam told me that when he was a boy, 
he was coming, he came home from school and the house had been moved. <laughs> okay? He slept in it that night, they slept in it that night, he went back to school, and the next day it had been moved even further. And so uh, they, I guess they, they decided it wasn't uh, quite far enough away, but you see this house right here, look, watch what happens to this highway as I stroll this back and forth. It's just disappearing. It goes right through the farmland up here is where the farm is. So that house must have sat over here someplace. Uh, maybe this structure right here, but it had to be moved. And when he got home after school, his house had been moved and they slept in it that night. And then, then, they, then it got moved a little bit further the next day. And thus made room uh, for the new highway. Also, what's kind of neat, take a look at this. This Route 1 is a two-lane road here, but I'm guessing that that's probably the original Route 1. You know, the original, original Route 1. Um, and, and we're talking about um, my understanding, I'm not an authority, authority on Indian history, but most of these roads that the present roads are on now, or at least these roads, were paths that the, um, the indigenous people used for thousands of years. And then when the settlers came in, then they would use those same roads. So I'm guessing that this is 1939 road right there. That probably was the original road. And in the 1940s, the two-lane road gets built. Can you see what's happening? So some of that road back there is the, is, is the bypass. Okay, so it's kind of neat to play with this. Um, there's a danger in playing with this. <laughs> what do you think the danger is? <laughs> you, you, you end up doing nothing but doing this all day long. It's just, it, it, it's actually, it, 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 uh, uh, and, uh, it, it gets you trapped in doing it. Thank you very much. development and then he bought the land from uh, and sold land in East Beach. I, I, I'm not, I didn't really go into the history of how it thought as much as others, so I wouldn't want to venture. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Thank okay, you. thank you. I hope